So, we have seen many examples of categories so far yeah? and some categories are spatial in uh, I mean just the way graphs are built, yeah? graphs are built with vertices and then arrows. So, I mean directed graphs, whenever I say graphs then directed graphs. So, in a similar fashion I feel like a category can be generated out of thick points and thick home sets. So, basically uh, if you look at this, the spread of the category that is captured by this pre-order. Yeah? So, pre-orders will say that they are thin categories, so they capture the spread from where can you go to where, yeah? that way. So, the objects themselves do not really play any role, yeah? the, the objects only have one endomorphism namely identity morphism and if at all the home set is non-empty then it is just a singleton. Okay, so, they talk about spread whereas this example number 6 which is about monoids, yeah, that is something to the other end that you have taken one point and you have added too many endomorphisms but there is only one object. So, this is about thick and thin parts. Okay? So, in some sense I feel like these are the two generating examples for ca all categories, two uh, basic examples. Okay. So, uh, one example uh, like two examples that we saw last time and we have not really described them properly that is the category of small categories and the category of locally small categories and where we said that the morphisms between categories are functors between them. Okay, so, what are these functors? The definition is quite simple. So, functors you should be given two categories, yeah, then only you can define a functor. So, given categories C and D, a functor f from C to D is given by the data of, so what is the structure, yeah, I mean the structure and properties that that distinction is always going to be very crucial. So, if you remember the structure of a category is the collection of objects, the collection of morphisms, the identity maps, domain codomain and identity and finally, the composition. Okay? So, this is given by the data of, well first thing, an object F A for each object A of C. So, an object should get mapped to another object. Then a morphism F F from F A to F B for each morphism f from a to b, oh I mean this morphism in d for each morphism f from a to b in c. So, basically this is saying three different things, it is not just saying that uh, morphisms get mapped to morphisms, it is also saying that the domain and codomain are preserved. Okay? And composition, so whenever and if for F and G in Morsi, the composition GF exists, I will sometimes write a circle between them, sometimes I would not, I will just write juxtaposition composition then 
what is the image of GF? That, that just has to be the composition of the images. So, basically the composition has to exist which will automatically be true by the second condition yeah? and this, this holds. Satisfying, yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing. For each object, for each object A of C, what is the image of the identity morphism? Identity of the image. Yeah. So one sub F A. So, identities map to identities, composition to composition, objects to objects and domain codomain morphisms everything just to appropriate locations. Now, functors if you look at them then uh, I mean you can obviously compose functors yes. Yeah, there are because if you are taking this category C then this category D and this category E then you will always map it here, then you map it here. So, then composition of functors is naturally going to give you a functor. Then there is also identity functor on each category. What does it do? It takes objects of that category and maps it to itself. Then it takes morphism, maps it to itself. So, composition is automatically preserved, identity is preserved. So, so far what I described to you is the structure of is the categorical structure of the category cat. Hmm? So, it is simple yeah I mean uh, therefore, there is no Russell's paradox here. The collection of all categories I mean up to any any collection I mean here we are talking about small categories or locally small categories, but that will again be a category and that is important. And functors are ubiquitous. Yeah, this word get used to that. Ubiquitous means present everywhere. Yeah, they are omnipresent. Ubiquitous means they are omnipresent. They are present in all areas of mathematics. So today our goal is mostly to look at different types of examples of functors. And you simply start in any field, and you will find so many examples of functors and they are very natural examples of functors. So, let us start. So, examples of functors. Now, newbies always make a confusion did you say function when I when I say functor then they ask whether it is a function, but actually all functions are in fact functors. Okay, so, that is our first example. How do we I mean what are the do, what is the domain of a function? A set exactly. So, it is a set. So, uh, set we have seen can be treated as a category. It is a small discrete category. So, let us look at that. So, suppose A and B are small discrete categories. What is the meaning of discrete category? Only morphisms are identity morphisms very good. So, out of all these definitions uh, all these this data what has to be preserved? Objects should go to objects. So, what are objects? Objects are elements of the set. So, elements should go to elements identities automatically go to identities and there are no other morphisms to care about. So, basically just that much data. So, then Then a functor f from a to b is 
simply a function. Okay, now another thing, suppose m1 and m2 are small monoids, are small one object categories. Then a functor f from m1 to m2, what will it do? It will take that object to that object. Yeah, there is nothing to do there. But it will take a morphism to a morphism. So basically it is taking an element of one monoid to another element in such a way that the identity is preserved. Right? And composition is preserved so that multiplication is preserved. So it is just a is a monoid homomorphism. Homomorphism is just HM. Okay. In particular, groups, if M1 and M2 happen to be groups, then it will be a group homomorphism. Right? And uh, even if you even if G1 is a group and G2 is just a monoid, then what will happen? It is a monoid homomorphism, but it will like the elements of the group will only map to invertible elements, invertible elements because there is some identity. Yeah, if G M1 happens to be a group, then for every F there is some G such that G F is equal to identity equal, uh, equal to F G. Okay, so in that case G F and F G are I mean equal to identity, this equation has to be preserved by any functor. Okay? So every functor preserves equations, so that is what you should keep in mind. So therefore, invertible morphisms will always go to invertible morphisms. In particular, what I am saying that all isomorphisms are always mapped to isomorphisms under functors. So, I am just going to write it as a property. If f is an iso in a category C and f is a functor then f f is an iso with what is the inverse of ff inverse? F of f inverse? Correct. The only logical choice that you have. Yeah, so, this is just a side remark. Okay, so, suppose P1 and P2 are posets means partially ordered sets. Then a functor f from p1 to p2 is what do you call it in a monotone map? It preserves order. Why? Because post set is a pre-order. Pre-order means the home set is non-empty. If it is non-empty, then the corresponding home set also has to be non-empty. So you can see how beautifully all these different spatial cases come under one umbrella. I mean, those who are looking at category theory for the first time, would you have thought that monoid homomorphisms and monotone maps are just two spatial cases of the same construction? Okay, so, is a monotone map. Monotone means order preserving map. Okay, so, here I can also put uh, pre orders. Yeah, it does not have to be a 
post set, it can also be a pre order and still the idea will work. Okay. Now we are planning to go ahead and introduce some large categories. The fourth one is perhaps uh, familiar to some of you at least suppose G is a group. Then a functor f from g to the category of sets is what do you call it in your everyday language? No, it is not a forgetful functor. It is a functor from g thought of as a category to the category of sets. It is called a permutation representation. Okay. So, what is happening? How many objects does G have? No, how many objects? Cardinality of G is how many morphisms there are? There is one object. One object. So, one object has to map to one object. So, one set. So, functor must send that unique object to some set. Then, what else is happening? It is not getting embedded. There is no Sn over here. Set of invertible maps. Yes, correct, correct, correct. So, you are mapping it, mapping this single object to a set. Yeah, so let me write it. Yeah, usually this is a helpful way. So, suppose I am mapping it to set x. Then I have some morphism. Every morphism is an endomorphism in a group. So, this thing is also getting mapped to x and this is some element of the group, let us say g and this g will also get mapped to some element and I am calling it fg. Okay. But what is this fg? By this remark star, yeah, the remark star it says that every invertible map because every element in the group is an isomorphism in this category G. So, therefore, it will map to something invertible. So, that is an automorphism. I mean automorphism or a self bijection from X to X. Right? So, it is the symmetric group of self bijections of X. So, basically what you obtained is a group homomorphism from G to the symmetric group of X is simply a group homomorphism from f from g to sim, sim of x for some x for x equal to f of this unique object. So, this is called a permutation representation. This is a permutation representation of G. Okay. Now, if I change the category of sets to something else, yeah, I am going to do that on the next slide. Yeah. So, a functor, it is still in the same example, a functor f from G to let us say R vector spaces, what will it give you? There is no embedding happening here. I never said it is an embedding. endomorphisms of a particular vector space is not a choice. I mean that is too big of a set. They have to be automorphisms. Isomorphism is also not a, I mean isomorphism of what with what? V to V. 
So that's automorphism. Yeah, the name for that is automorphism. So this is called a k-linear representation, a r-linear representation of G. Where is embedding coming into picture? Image of those maps is a subgroup of the automorphism of that vector space. So that is the embedding. That's embedding means it has to be injective. But where, where is it injective? So what about me choosing zero vector space? If I choose zero vector space, then what is the automorphism group of zero vector space? Just the identity. So now it's a group homomorphism from G to the trivial group. Now it's a homomorphism. It's not necessarily an embedding. Okay, so it's just called an R linear representation. If you change it with any ring R and then mod, then it is again it's called an R linear representation. So representation theory is study of some functors. Okay, if you are interested in representations of groups, then that is, I mean either it is, uh, yeah, I mean it is the same thing. You usually map it to vector spaces, yeah, because we believe that we understand vector spaces better than we understand groups. So that is why this is the right thing to do. Okay. In fact, we are going to see later that there is a category of all functors between two fixed vector space, uh, two fixed categories as well, yeah, where the objects themselves are functors and there will be morphisms between functors, okay, so which we call natural transformations and that will be the category of all R linear representations of a group, fixed group. So you are again studying a category of functors. Any questions? Okay. So this idea can be, uh, I mean, made general. In fact, uh, towards like the end of the course. We will also see that R mod, the category of modules, is also a category of functors. Every module is a representation. Okay. Uh, so now let me make this uh, open. Can you give me some examples of functors where you are taking a fundamental, fundamental group? Very good. So let me check this is number 5. So fundamental group. Of what? Topological. No. Connected topological. Path, topological. path connected. Pointed. Pointed is important. Connected path connected, I mean that depends on. So this is pi 1. Pi 1 is a functor from top star to groups. Okay. So here every x comma x naught will get mapped to pi 1 x comma x naught and any continuous base point preserving map will induce a group homomorphism. So it behaves well with respect to the natural maps present in top star and therefore this is a functor. More generally you have a fundamental groupoid yeah, the, that is pi 1 and that goes from top to GRPD, the category of group points. Yeah. Now, in fact, we can also do something else. Pi 1 can also be thought of as, like little pi 1 can be thought of as a functor from a quotient of top star by homotopy equivalence classes of topological spaces, base point preserving homotopy equivalence classes. So here I can also say this is H T P Y star Yeah, you understand H T P Y star? 
so there is there are two topolo pointed topological spaces and there is a homotopy between those two spaces which preserves the base point homotopy equivalence between two spaces yeah which is just a pair of maps in opposite directions such that the compositions are homotopy equivalent to the identity okay so fundamental group this is a natural choice yes any other examples of functors that you can think of forgetful functor okay good so okay uh, forgetful functor what does it forget really any structure that we want okay so let me ask you uh, is this a forgetful functor from groups to sets yeah the usually forgetful functors it's customary to denote them by u okay u for underlying so a group is g then some multiplication some inverse and some identity and you forget about m i e and you just map it to g yeah that's a forgetful functor but can i say that the natural map from abelian groups to groups is that a forgetful functor no why not it's also forgetting something it's forgetting abelian structure it's forgetting a property it's not a forgetful functor if you are forgetting a property then you usually get inclusion functors yeah not forgetful functors so let me simultaneously write this other class okay so this is inclusion functor from the category of abelian groups to groups what about monoids and groups all groups are monoids that's an inclusion functor aren't we forgetting the inverse part of the existence of inverse is a property correct so therefore i should write inclusion from the category of monoids to the category of groups i mean i can also write it like this so but uh, while writing groups we write two maps as the property of groups like the multiplication map and the inverse map yes i mean that's a choice of language but that doesn't mean that if you know m and m has the property that there is an inverse and there is an identity then you can't really forget it even if it is not explicitly given it still has the property which is what makes it a group so basically it's automatically a monoid okay, uh, so is there a concrete definition to what 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 constitutes a property and what constitutes a structure yeah i mean definability if <laughs> yeah so let's not go into that so groups to sets yeah then what if we take the category of rings what can we forget we can forget multiplication and what do we get after forgetting multiplication abelian groups or you can also forget addition and then you will get first from here you will get monoids yes it's i r i n g so i stands for identity so it's present otherwise i would write r n g okay and then from both of them i can get down to the category of sets by forgetting about every piece of algebraic structure there is okay another thing that we can do is go from topological spaces 
to the category of sets. So, you simply forget about the topology, yeah, that is a valid forgetful function. You are actually forgetting structure here, yeah, topology is not a property. So, you are forgetting it. Matrix space, to topological. Matrix space to topological space, what will it be? It is also? Metric, existence of a metric, you are forgetting about that. Yes, so this is also a forgetful functor, very good. So, these are all forgetful functors, matrix spaces to topological spaces. Now, uh, when we are looking at it for the first time, it might seem meaningless to forget about some structure, but it is actually quite useful. Uh -huh. I mean, you can always remember the derived topology from the matrix. I can also write normed spaces, normed vector spaces behind that, that from a norm you can get a matrix. I can also write inner product spaces, from inner products you get norms, from norms you get matrix, matrix you get a topology and from topology you forget about everything, you get a set. So, actually this is a very important notion in mathematics yeah, that we forget about parts of structures and that will become clear as we go along. And what about let us say uh, commutative monoids and monoids? That is an inclusion functor, yeah, just to uh, make sure I have a name for it. Yeah, I am writing it, then similarly commutative rings and uh, just rings. Uh, so, you have uh, one, yeah? one, so when we are taking the inclusion of monoid to groups, so will that not be from groups to monoids? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, 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 yeah, obviously, I am really sorry about that. It is from category of groups to category of monoids, thank you. And this one further we can include into semi groups. Yes, that was just a right o, not typo. <laughs> okay. We can get the commutative monoids from abelian groups, right? Commutative monoids from abelian groups. And how do we do that? You can get commutative monoids from. Yes, yes. So, you want me to write it here? Commutative monoid to abelian groups or abelian, abelian groups to? Groups huh, right, yeah. So, uh, I mean I should write it here, yeah, and here, yes, thank you. I can in fact get rid of these notations, but usually for inclusions we will use I. Sir, from monoid to semi group, uh -huh. we are forgetting the identity and structure. Is it? Ha, you have, I am sure you have shown that property. I, is it possible for a semi group to have two different identities? Like that multiplication in a semi group has an identity that is a property. It only depends on property, yeah, therefore it is still an inclusion functor. I mean these are uh, certain things to prove actually. Uh, another thing we, are, we have been talking about this pointed spaces, so set star to sets, you simply forget about the choice of the point, top star to top. These are forgetful functors. Then well, you can also consider something uh, more complicated like a topological group. A topological group is a topological space together with a continuous binary function defined on it such that the inverse for that is also continuous. Okay? 
So, it has got two different structures, it is a group, it is a topological space such that these M and I are continuous maps. M is a map from G cross G to G and G cross G has product topology. So, it is continuous and I has a map from G to G that has. So, from here you can go to top so or if we define a map from like topological group to like a problem, we define a topological monoid then will it be considered a forgetful bunker or an inclusion bunker because now we have an I which is which has a significance. Which has a significance but We have to define continuity. I mean, continuity is also a requirement. Yeah, but like uh, we can't. Uh, I mean, I cannot be just thought of as a property here. I is a structure. That there exists a continuous inverse. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, that depends on how we are looking at things, isn't it? If every single map that we consider has to be continuous, if that is our understanding then perhaps it will just be a forgetful uh, or inclusion or otherwise if you also allow other functions then it will be. If we say uh, this is a property then the, this property comes from some structure in, in that yeah. but continuity having Continuity also comes from some structure, no, no okay. Right. Isn't the identity definable? Inner, I mean, it may be definable in the language of groups, but topology, which language are we talking about? I mean, uh, this is an inverse map, it is not identity. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, inverse map, but topology. Okay, uh, if, if our language does not allow that, then we will treat it as a forgetful function. Okay. Okay, so now we have got some obvious things. Yeah, forgetful functor like you and inclusion functors. You are forgetting about some some data that you already know. Now we have we are going to look at examples which go in the opposite directions, where we are trying to introduce new kind of spaces in. Uh, in the most general way possible. So, for example, yeah, let us start with this. Can you describe a functor from sets to top? If you are given just a set, can you equip it with, I mean, can you associate to it discrete topology? Yeah. So, uh, so, I am writing it tau disk, okay. is that the only choice? In discrete topology. So, tau discrete is every single subset is open, so power set and there is another functor also which is tau indiscrete, where only the full space and the empty space are open and nothing else. So, this is an obvious choice. Okay. So, this type of functor is called a free functor. Yeah, we are trying to introduce some structure on our uh, original structure, on top of our original structure. So, what about let us say sets to abelian groups? Does there exist a functor given a set x? I mean, uh, one thing, yeah, ju just a moment. Uh, one thing you should notice that we are not just doing it at the level of objects. Okay, if we have two sets x and y, then a function between them will also be continuous under these two uh, topologies. Yeah? If you equip x with discrete topology, then every function is continuous and if you equip y with indiscrete topology, then also everything is continuous. 
So both these properties are being used. Yeah, that's always taught in a basic topology course. Yeah, if the domain is discrete, then inverse image of anything is always open. And if the codomain is indiscrete, then there are two only two things to check. Yeah, so we are using both of those things. Yeah, sets to abelian groups. Abelianization of the free group on of the free group. Okay, you are describing two different things at the same time. So uh, you are also describing this. So this is the free group. Yes. Okay. So x mapping to f x. Yes. Um, so let us remind everybody of what the free group is. So free group means you take symbols. Yeah, we are trying to form words words with elements from capital X and formal inverses. Yeah, so free group is you take uh, words with alphabet, finite words, yeah, I mean that is important, finite words with alphabet X and X inverse which is simply A inverse for A in X and up to identification A inverse A equal to A A inverse equal to epsilon where epsilon is the empty word. For each A in X. Okay, so, this is what we do. So, that is a free group and what is the operation in the free group? Concatenation, okay, good. Okay, so, he said take the abelianization of the free group, but there is also a simpler exp explanation for sets to group abelian groups. As a Z module, yes. What Z module? Z linear combinations of elements of Z linear combinations of right X support indexed support finite support functions. Very good. So I mean over here, what is happening? That X is getting mapped to. I will just write this direct sum of capital X many copies of Z. So these are all finite support functions. Yeah. And if you have a map from x to y, then automatically that induces a map between these two spaces. What do you do? You are given a tuple. How do you deal with that tuple? So the map will be from, let's say, for a copy of small x in x. Uh -huh. f of small x, correct, 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 correct. Right, so the map is induced by action on the index sets, yeah, the most natural thing that you can do and similarly for free groups also. What do you do in case of free groups? You take those words on each entry in that word, you apply f, you extend that function, yeah you apply f to each alpha element of the alphabet and if it is of the form a inverse then you take f of a whole inverse which is another symbol and then if there are some cancellations to happen then you cancel them out and then whatever is remaining the reduced word is your final answer okay so th that's how these bo both of these are actually functors okay Okay, so uh, now let us look at some more examples of this kind. So what about sets to pre-orders? Can every set be equipped with a pre-order relation? Like 
smallest reflexive relation? Diagonal relation, okay. So uh, that's x comma delta x. Yeah, I'm I'm writing delta x for the diagonal relation a comma a, where a belongs to x. There is also another possibility. Right, x comma x cross x. There are too many x's in this, but I hope you can understand. Okay, so uh, x cross x, so x square. Everything is related to everything. Okay, then <coughs> can you do the same thing with posets also? Like a set mapping to posets. That is a poset, correct. So, in fact, I should add one more example. Yeah, posets and pre-orders. The category of posets to category of sets. That is a forgetful function, you forget about your operation, no, your relation, order relation, and similarly, you can do pre orders to, to sets. Okay. Then there is another type of examples. Now, this is happening from the category of pre-orders to the category of posets. I mean partial orders, let me just say par uh, partial orders, yeah, not because it is not necessary that they are sets, just from pre-orders to partial orders and this mapping is the quotient. So, if I am given a pre-order p less equal, then I am going to map it to p less equal quotiented out by less equal intersection greater equal, less equal intersection greater equal means the things which are equivalent, this is less than this, this is less than this, so they are equivalent. So, if I reduce, I mean these are redundancies, yeah. If I remove all the redundancies, then whatever I get that will be a partial order. So, for example, yeah, I mean uh, if you are confused about this, then let me say I have got three elements A, B, C, this is my P. Then I can say my less equal is defined to be this, that it consists of a is less than b, a is less than uh, a is less than c, b is less than c and c is less than b. Okay? So, all these things are given. Now, what will be the corresponding partial order? Are b and c actually different here? No, they are not they are not equal, they are definitely different, but you can identify them because their relationships with other elements are exactly identical. So, we are taking a quotient, okay. So, this is I mean I am just going to call it uh, the posetal reflection, the partial order reflection. why it is called a reflection, we will come to that later, but this is called a partial order reflection function. Yeah, so, less equal here, let me just complete it. So, this will be B C and C B. So, you have to quotient out by this relation and of course, I mean, oh, I did not mention uh, A A B B C C, <laughs> yeah, that has to be considered as well. So, here also I will add BB and CC in this collection and then I take the quotient. Okay, so, basically B and C are identified and it is just a two element chain. Now, 
in a similar fashion i can give you one more interesting example so let us start with cat and i am going to assign to it one pre order i will take a category c and it's a small category a yeah? cat i have written small at so small category so take the objects collection of objects of c and equip it with a less equal relation where for a and b in objects of c a is less equal b if and only if the home set in c of a and b is non empty if that home set is non empty i will make it thin i will just retain one single morphism and i will get rid of everything else so by transitivity by com like compositions will transform into transitivity identities will give you reflexivity so we are indeed in this pre order this is called a pre order reflection and you can also do it with cat all caps so we can think of it as a subjective function are you really forgetting anything yeah, no 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 that's not part of structure data of composition whether it is empty or non empty that's i mean there can be multiple uh, automorphisms on an object no 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 it's it's definitely not part of structure so what is it part of like uh, i mean we are detecting something whether it is empty or whether particular home set is empty or not that's what we are detecting i don't see why this should be a part of structure so is it an intention function no i said it's a pre order reflection it's a reflection function when i will explain reflection functors maybe we'll come back to it actually there is another thing which i should write perhaps now that we have talked about it then from cat uh, from pre orders uh to this capital cat oh sorry i i should write it an under here pre orders to cat this is actually an inclusion functor yeah every pre order is a category first and it has some properties and that property we are forgetting to just remember that it's a category okay so at this point perhaps i should point out one interesting thing about so this is a note or a remark that suppose this is an equivalence relation on the collection of morphisms such that whenever f is equivalent to g and h is equivalent to k f h and g k are composable i mean exist are defined then f h is also equivalent to g k then we say 
that this is a congruence relation on Morsi and C quotiented out by this is a quotient category of C. So, there is a surge, I mean puncture from C to C mod this. Now, we have already seen such examples construction of HTPY from top and construction of this pre order reflection from a category, they are both constructions of this kind. In this case, actually, what is our rel relation that f is equivalent to g if and only if domain of f is equal to domain of g and codomain of f is equal to codomain of g. If we take this as your relation, then you quotient out by this congruence relation and you will get the corresponding pre order reflection. Yeah, so, the, this is a quotient construction. Yeah, this is for pre order reflection. Quotient groups definitely, yes. Quotient rings, I do not want to talk about them just yet because we have not done additive categories. Yeah, later on, we can say that. Okay, then uh, some other but still interesting examples of functors which, well, I will write them down. So, this is R vector spaces but I am just putting a condition that they are finite dimensional. Then from here, I mean R vector spaces with a fixed basis, okay? fixed basis and then I am mapping it to mat R and every vector space with a basis will get mapped to simply the dimension of B. Now, this is a functor and what will be the corresponding matrix in the image? This is standard matrix yes, we are given fixed basis. So, with respect to them, this particular linear transformation will have a matrix and that will be the matrix in the image. Okay, so, this is another example. Then if you have done algebraic geometry, commutative rings and its opposite category, yeah, we have not yet talked about this, two category of topological spaces. So, if you take a ring R, then the Zariski spectrum that is also a function. Okay, those who do not know about it, Zariski spectrum is the collection of its points. Yeah, points of this topological space are prime ideals in prime ideals of R. And if you are given a morphism, a ring homomorphism from R to S, uh, then in fact, you get a map in the opposite direction. Yeah, this is called, I mean, I am just going to write it as spec F. And this happens because for any prime ideal, P of S, F inverse of P is prime in R. Inverse image of a prime ideal is a prime ideal and therefore, the map naturally goes in the opposite direction and therefore, I mean this map F is a map of commutative rings, but what I am trying to show is that the direction automatically reverses. 
even though the map goes from R to S, here the map goes from spec S to spec R. So therefore, I have to write it is a functor from C rings op to top. Now here comes a definition. Okay, so definition like f from C to D. This is a functor. A functor is called a covariant functor. Covariant means it doesn't change direction of arrows on C. And a functor and a covariant, okay, let me make it precise. And a covariant functor G from C op to D is called a contravariant functor on C. So, normally we will try to avoid talking about it by specifying the domain and codomain categories. But this is the standard practice. Okay. So, standard practice says that I will give you a contravariant functor on category of sets, which means I am giving you a functor from sets op to something else. Okay. So, that you have to always remember. Covariant and contravariant will in this course will mostly try to avoid it, but sometimes like things just happen. But we are not going to say it is a contravariant functor on C op. Contravariant functor on C is a covariant functor on C op. Equivalently, you can also think of this G as a functor from C to D op. Yeah, only on one of the categories you have to reverse the direction of the arrows. I am going to give you one thing to think about here. Yeah, so these are power set functors. So, there is two of them. Yeah. So, this is P from the category of sets to the category of sets. So, what does it do? I mean naturally P A and this will go to the power set of B. And now, if I am given a function f from A to B, where will it be mapped to? The image, yeah. So, if you take an element A prime, yeah, I mean, this is PF. If this belongs to this, then where will it be mapped to? F of A prime, yeah, the image of A prime under F. And this is fine, yeah, I mean, you can check that this is a functor. But at the same time, there is also another functor and I am not going to complete it yet. So, this is P A and this is P B and whenever I am given this F, then I can pull something back. I can take the inverse image, not just the direct image, but I can take an inverse image. So, if, if I am given some B prime in P B, I can associate to it F inverse of B prime, which is a subset of A. So, this map actually goes in the reverse direction. So, I can think of it as a functor from sets to sets op or sets op to sets, but these are two different functors. So, this one is called the covariant power set functor, this is called the contravariant power set functor and they are very different. Yeah? I mean you can see that this direction, sense of direction is already inbuilt in our mathematics. Inverse image has to do with reversing the arrows yeah, and not preserving the arrows. Okay? So, therefore, I said power set functors, there are 
two of them. Okay, uh, there is one more function that I want to talk about. Ha! Huh. Now, every function from category. So suppose, yeah, uh, let me keep track of the count. Suppose f from c to d is a morphism in cat then i can define then define f op from c op to d op what does it do well, it takes an object and it maps it to itself. I mean, whatever f does on objects, you repeat that. Whatever f does on object, you repeat that. And suppose there is a morphism over here, where will you send it to? f of f op. Uh -huh. So, f a to f b there is a morphism f f. Right? First of all, make sure whatever I have written is correct. Have I written it correctly? See, I said that let f be a morphism from A to B, but every morphism in C op is already of the form op of something. So, I should not be writing this actually, I should be writing f op over here. So, where is f, little f? Little f is in, yes, no, little f is in? in C. Okay. Corresponding to that, what do I have? F f from F b to F a in D. And corresponding to this F f, what do I have? F f op from, from F a to F b. Okay, so, what is the ultimate expression? Capital F op of small f op is equal to f f op. But you can see after doing so many ops, ultimately this functor itself is covariant. Okay, so, therefore, what I am saying that op from cat to cat is a covariant functor. Okay, despite doing so many ops. Okay, so uh, here you are confused. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, actually an exclamation mark. Uh huh. Yes, that is what we did. We started with a morphism little f op from A to B in C op, which means it corresponded to a morphism f from B to A in C. Associated to that, we already have a morphism f f from F B to F A and now you simply treat it as the opposite morphism. Okay. So, uh, if functors are generalizations of functions, then we should have a natural notion of injectivity and surjectivity, but it is not that simple. Yeah? We need something in more detail 
something happens locally for injectivity and surjectivity. So those properties are called faithful functors and full functors. So we will look at them next time. Yeah? Uh -huh. uh, that is not needed for the conclusion that of this covariance huh? because we have already defined f of from c of to d of uh -huh. but that statement itself we get that of is a covariance. Yes, but I mean ultimately I have to draw the square to convince everybody that the directions are indeed correct. There is no diagram here. When I am writing, us, this, this is actually a very good question. When I am writing, yeah, I mean, please, please pay attention to these arrows. These arrows, they all have a tail, vertical line at the tail. That means assignment. There is no diagram here. Yeah, that is the uh, important property of a functor. There is no correspondence between this object in this category and this object in this category. It is plainly just an association of this object to this object. Okay? No function between them. This is the thing that you have to put in your brains. <laughs> it is just association which behaves well with respect to morphisms and composition, the kind of structure that you have in both categories. There is no commutative diagram here. Commutative diagrams will have only arrows and commutative diagrams only work in a particular category. You should be working in a single category, but there is not a single category here. Yeah, little f is not a morphism in, in cat. Okay, let us stop. <laughs>